It's been two weeks since the Game Awards 2018, and I assume that like me, most of you were watching in anticipation of some cool new announcements. The show was off to a good start. Sean Layden from PlayStation, together with Phil Spencer and Reggie fils from Microsoft and Nintendo respectively, took the stage to celebrate gaming as one community. In the past, new trailers for upcoming games from all the platform holders were pretty much a guarantee, and the intro shaped the expectation that things wouldn't be any different now. Well, that ended up being true for the latter two parties, but it was PlayStation who shined in their absence for the remaining duration of the show. It's safe to say this left me surprised, especially now, realizing that this absence came in the wake of two curious announcements on Sony's side. PlayStation Experience, which would have typically followed up the Game Awards, was cancelled after a four-year streak. Even more shocking was the news that, for the first time in history, Sony will not appear on E3 2019 stage floor, nor will any press conference be held around this time. Within the snap of a finger, the two main events of the year, along with our familiar schedule for what to look forward to, were completely gone. On one hand, these choices I found to be understandable. A PlayStation 5 is on the horizon, I think everyone can agree upon that by now. Simultaneously though, we've not quite reached that point yet. With games like Death Stranding, The Last of Us Part 2 and Ghost of Tsushima, some of the biggest PS4 exclusives are still to be released. Surely Sony would want them to stay in the picture and give them the attention they deserve. So what is PlayStation up to? Is there a secret strategy that we don't know about? Is it simply a natural choice to lay low until the next generation begins? Most importantly, what will the last stage of the life cycle look like in terms of all the games that have yet to come out? These are the crucial questions that I will try to answer in this video. As long and vague as the road ahead may seem right now, I'm confident that the future is looking very bright. At this point, I think it's clear that the PlayStation 5 is at a maximum two years away from us. All the signs point towards it. PlayStation has completely stopped announcing new first-party projects. There are no traditional press conferences in sight for the foreseeable future, and we've already seen many rumors about PS5 dev kits out in the wild. Everything indicates that, speaking purely about exclusive titles, this is likely the last batch of games we're dealing with right now. The release window of the PlayStation 5 is obviously an essential piece of information that is needed to map out the last phase of the PS4. Once you know when it will be here, you know how much time is left for all the other games to appear. I would say that three options are currently available. The first one is a fall 2019 launch. I've always considered this a fair possibility, until recent events which have truly reduced the odds to being low. My reasoning would be that an event like E3 is simply required for a launch of this scope. Stakes will be high, which means that less risks will usually be taken. Skipping out on E3 for the first time in 25 years goes against that principle in every way imaginable. The only logical explanation for making a choice like this is that Sony realizes it will have little new stuff to show. There would be no mention of a PS5 yet, so naturally they wouldn't be able to talk about any of their unannounced upcoming games. PS4 titles like The Last of Us 2, Death Stranding and Ghost of Tsushima are highly anticipated, but we've known about them for years. In fact, they were already the main focus at E3 last year. What I'm trying to say is that the surprise factor would be completely gone. This is the only reason that justifies cancelling the E3 showcase, because it's precisely these surprises that tend to make the most impact. They shape our view whether we witness a good, decent or disappointing show. No, 2020 looks to be almost guaranteed by now. A release in the early months is in the realm of possibilities. We witnessed this with the Nintendo Switch. At the same time, you'll understand that the likelihood of that happening is low. After all, we've never seen a PlayStation console launch at the beginning of the year. There is one more very important reason why both 2019 and early 2020 ultimately seem highly unlikely. Take a look at the plain amount of PS4 games yet to release. We'll get into each one and discuss them individually, but it will become clear that there are simply too many games left to be released within this short time frame alone. 
I still see people argue that some games like Death Stranding could be multi-platform releases, and who am I to say that's impossible? Looking at last generation though, judging how Sony made sure that the final batch of PlayStation 3 exclusives came out in time for PS4's launch, I personally don't see that happening. And that really only leaves the fall of 2020 as the obvious moment where things will have to go down. This is when I expect the PS5 to release and gives us two remaining years for the last games to hit store shelves. So let's take a look at those remaining games. I will briefly discuss how I feel about them and then speculate about their current status. Rest assured, the timeline at this moment is still remarkably vague. Out of the entire list of upcoming titles, only one game has a concrete release date. Days Gone was initially scheduled for February, but has been pushed back to April 26th, 2019. As the only date currently set in stone, it implicates that we should probably not expect any other game to be delivered before. Now, me personally, I fear that Days Gone could be met with mixed reception. Don't get me wrong, while it's great to see Sony Band take on a AAA console title for the first time in literally decades, it will inevitably be compared to the so many other PS4 exclusives out there. What we've seen looks alright, but matching that high level of quality will be hard. The animations still look rough, the setting is a little generic, and whether the story can make an impact is still one big question mark. Add up all these elements together and I have a hard time seeing it outdo expectations. Delaying the release date by a few months and completely ignoring Days Gone at E3 2018 all but boosted my confidence, though the extra time will hopefully result in a more polished experience. All that said, I do believe the game is going to sell well. The zombie apocalypse appeals to the mainstream audience, and as long as the reviews aren't too unforgiving, people will definitely pick it up. Days Gone should be a fun distraction that will keep us warm while waiting for the true heavy hitters. A few smaller titles have also been confirmed for 2019 already, though they lack a specific release date for now. One of those is Concrete Genie, coming from PlayStation's most recently acquired studio, Pixel Opus. The game is currently scheduled for Spring 2019, just like Everybody's Golf, which will get a special VR version within the same window. Then there's the Medieval remake, the sole reveal that made last PSX at least somewhat worthwhile. A new version remade from the ground up is coming to PS4 at some point this year, which will hopefully introduce a lot of unfamiliar people to this classic from the good old days. I know I definitely look forward to experiencing it for the first time. Concrete Genie, Everybody's Goal VR and Medieval, each are games of a relatively small caliber. So while they will do their job filling the gaps in 2019, you'll understand that I don't expect any of them to truly make a mark. And that brings us to the final game officially listed for next year. I almost can't believe I'm saying it, but Dreams still has not come out yet. It's crazy to think back all the way to the PS4 reveal event, where we saw a conceptual version up and running already. Dreams was officially announced in 2015, went radio silent for two years, and then came back with the promise of a beta arriving in 2017. And then 2018, it never arrived. What exactly the reason is for its problematic development trajectory, I have honestly no idea. Even more important though is the question whether it will be a success. I have a lot of faith in Media Molecule and what I've seen so far definitely has a lot of potential. There is only one problem. Apart from a small die-hard community following every bit of news surrounding the game, I have not seen many people talk about Dreams at all. It's going to be interesting to see what will happen once Dreams finally comes out. With so much time and money invested, this may very well prove to be a make or break situation for Media Molecule as a studio. For now, these are all the PS4 games confirmed for 2019. The list of games is decent, though I'm sure you'll agree that one juggernaut is still lacking. Fortunately, this is where the so-called Big 3 come into play. These are the games that are undoubtedly at the center of attention, and the only question is when will they come out? First up is Death Stranding, still my personal most anticipated game out of them all. Though it may be the project we've known about for the longest, I've always assumed it to be the furthest away from us. Hideo Kojima left Konami and built his own studio in late 2015, so we all knew that the announcement came incredibly early when he teased the game at E3 merely six months later. Fast forward to fall 2018 and we still haven't really left the teasing stage. Aside from a recent trailer showing some brief clips, gameplay involving any real action remains unrevealed. That being said, new details about Death Stranding just came in through an interview with Norman Reedus, who plays the main character, Sam. 
He apparently claimed to be expecting an early 2019 release, though I can only take this with a large grain of salt. I highly doubt that as an actor, Norman Reedus is even told any information like this. I'm instantly reminded of last year, how Christopher Judge, the voice actor for Kratos in God of War, quote unquote leaked the release year. He ended up being wrong. Alas, all I would say to Kojima is to take all the time he needs. I'm still incredibly intrigued by what I've seen and I have full confidence in the team to deliver something truly unique. Next up is The Last of Us Part 2. I haven't made it a secret that me, myself, I still need some convincing whether the premise of this story can live up to my personal wishes. However, there is simply no denying, this is going to be Sony's most successful and important game. Naughty Dog creates technical masterpieces and remains part of the highest tier of developers. Anticipation is through the roof, the gameplay looked insane and fans seem thirsty for the smallest bits of information. But when is The Last of Us coming out? All we have right now is an estimate by Neil Druckmann at last PSX that the game was about 50-60% to 60 done. Do the math and you'll figure that a 2019 release should be a fair possibility. The game was in pre-production as Uncharted 4 development wrapped up and hit full speed after the release of The Lost Legacy. If all goes well, we may actually be playing it in the coming year. To round off the list we have Ghost of Tsushima. Sucker Punch was last in line to announce their new IP, though don't get it twisted, that doesn't have to mean it's the last game we will actually get our hands on. You may not realize that Ghost of Tsushima has been in development for the longest overall time. Sucker Punch's previous project was Infamous First Light in 2014 and ever since this has been their one and only priority. At this point we've seen both a story trailer and a 10 minute gameplay demo, so surely its release can't be all too far away. The graphics look gorgeous and I love the cinematography displayed so far. The scope of this experience will dictate how much development time remains. Odds are, quite some work may still be left. The current status of all these three games leaves us in a tough spot to predict the order in which they will be released. There is something to be said for each one of them, so the reality is, anything is possible. By cancelling PSX as well as E3, Sony has created a massive void. This empty period will last for another full year. What we're basically told is that we won't receive any updates on PlayStation games, that is to say, in the traditional way. Last week, an ambiguous tweet from Sean Layden teased that there may be something special around the corner. With a simple message that says, see you in the new year, it wouldn't surprise me if Sony did have a media showcase in store for us. Taking in mind the silence already started 6 months ago since E3, this show could be announced sooner rather than later. And when you think about it, it would make a lot of sense. The timing for an event like E3 has forever been a strategic choice. E3 takes place every year in June, based on the idea that games are released in the fall and could be both announced and played for the first time over there. However, in recent years, Sony went against the grain. They have abandoned the fall in favor of releasing most of their games in the early months. A new show in the beginning of the year could be the perfect solution to this problem. It would provide a way to announce release dates and give more concrete information as they'd be much closer to going gold. So here's how I personally expect things will play out. Games wise, 2019 will be a quieter year for PlayStation 4. During the early months in summer, all the confirmed 2019 releases will find a suitable spot. This leaves one out of the big three to be saved for around September, like Spider-Man and Uncharted The Lost Legacy in recent years. I did a Twitter poll very recently to hear whichever game you all think that is, and the general consensus seems to be that it would be either Ghost of Tsushima or The Last of Us Part 2. It's pure speculation, but I guess I'll follow. Now, whether Sony does host their own press conference or not, don't be afraid that they will go radio silent on how the big games are coming along. They may take the Rockstar approach, posting information and trailers via social media, with a possible announcement a few days in advance. Honestly, that would be nothing new. For example, this year, Sony revealed the release date for God of War, Detroit Become Human and Spider-Man all via the PlayStation blog, in most cases along with a special new trailer. Like I said, I believe 2019 will be remembered as a good, though slightly less significant year on the first party side. 
With Days Gone as the main focus early on, one of the big three games towards the end, as well as Dreams and a few smaller titles in between, there will be enough to keep us busy, of course also with plenty of third party support. Overall though, leaving the same impact like 2018 and some other years have done before, I predict it won't. Good news is, the best may be saved for last. During an investor's call back in May, PlayStation CEO John Codera said that in order to prepare for the next generation, the PlayStation division would crouch down, only so it could jump even higher in the future. In 2020, we may find ourselves in a very similar scenario as we did last generation, with a new console, amazing announcements and some of the most anticipated games appearing within the same year. Two massive games among Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us 2 will remain, perfect to fill the gap until the fall. A reveal event may be held early in the year, in the same vein as the unexpected press conference in February 2013, which I remember like it was yesterday. Whatever it is that Guerrilla Games, Sony Japan, Polyphony, Santa Monica, the rumored new San Diego studio and a dozen other development teams have been cooking up all this time, they'll be ready to show it off then and there. But of course, the announcement of the PlayStation 5 would be just the beginning. If you'd ask me, my reply to the big question is probably the simple answer. 2019 may be a quieter year, but if it is, it's only the calm before the storm. Thanks everybody for watching this video on the last years of the PlayStation 4. Make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments, because I definitely want to know when you think all these games are actually coming out. It's going to be interesting to discuss that. And as I upload this video, I will actually be on a holiday break in Lithuania, just so you know. So I wanted to make sure to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. Hopefully, you know, you have a fun time these next couple of days. Spend it together with friends and family if you can. But uh, yeah, for now, I hope it's going to be a fun time overall. With that being said, make sure, of course, that if you enjoy these videos, it's only with your support that I can keep going. So head over to patreon.com slash robingaming and consider supporting me there with a, you know, small pledge. Any amount that you personally like. In return, you'll get a couple of really cool rewards. For example, early access to videos like this. You'll show up in the credits like all the people next to me. And I do monthly Q&As as well. So with that being said, thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you again next time.